Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me again today. This is your host, ID Jester, and welcome back to the Advanced Squad Leader System rule set in about 15 minutes. And I'm a very, very happy guy today. And the reason I am so happy today is last episode, if you watched it, I finally got an episode that was 15 minutes or less. It was happened to be exactly 15 minutes long. So yes, the title of this video series, the Advanced Squad Leader rule set in about 15 minutes, now actually has a video that is 15 minutes or less. So it makes sense. So I'm a much happier man now because most of my videos as you know, run 17, 18, 20 minutes uh, long, and I've always had this inkling in the back of my mind that the uh, just, just the fact that the rule set, um, the 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 name of the series and and how it's been played out just doesn't match. So I'm very happy that now we can get that under our belt. We now have a video that's 15 minutes. So now we are the 15 minute rule set and. Um, Hopefully we can continue looking at these and get these done here. If you watched the last few episodes, we've been doing the movement phase of the German player's turn. We're going to get right back into it here. Our northern flank has been totally decimated. And it's quite interesting to see that just a couple units, this uh, fire lane here that was created by this machine gun, and having that one machine gun over there actually stopped quite a few units from moving forward. Um, of course, they tried to throw some smoke out there. And as a side note, I did not mention this in the one video, but somebody brought it to my attention. <coughs> Units that are CX, uh, when they <coughs> roll for determining if they uh, get smoke, it is a plus one of the die roll. Wouldn't have mattered because we didn't get di uh, smoke anymore, but I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention out there. If you do have to CX a unit, it is a plus one to the dice roll for um, determining if you actually make the smoke uh, not, um, roll or not. Okay, um, so yeah, our northern flank here is th the German player um, was totally decimated. We couldn't get smoke out there, couldn't get moving forward. One of our units broke, another unit pinned. Uh, we couldn't break through the line, but. Uh, all in all, not too bad because we were able to move up some units uh, and get them in a better position for our big breakthrough. I think uh, we were trying to get uh, too big a breakthrough actually anyways, but, um, uh, you know, uh, I, you know I, I was trying to do this video series, so I, I can't really set up every scenario perfectly and, and the outcomes and everything. But fortunately for the German player, as bad as it went on the northern flank, I foresee good things here on the southern flank. He's still got a lot of units to move, and we only pretty much has one defensive unit left, which is this half squad, and uh, so we're going to be able to do some good movement here with our units and uh, check out a few last rules that we're going to look at um, as we progress through this and finish up and then uh, hopefully see how everything works out in the long run here on the south end. They're able to put out lots of uh, residual firepower on the fireboard, but unfortunately none of them are very strong. Um, so yeah, and he's only got one little half squad left. He does have this leader here. We don't know what's underneath the leader. He could do some damage with that leader. He does have this concealed unit back here. It could be something pretty dangerous. But at this point, the German player is feeling a little bit happy. I'm feeling happy for the German player. So um, he's actually going to <coughs> assault move this unit. He's going to activate it and assault move this unit right here. Um, again, I might not be making the best of moves, but the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show something later on that will apply to the rules here. So at this point the German player can defensive fire with his units and we're going to assume that he goes ahead and decides to defensive first fire with this unit in... I'm not sure why it's not popping up. Hello? Um, what row are we in? K7. So he's going to defensive first fire. He is going to get a minus one because the unit is uh, out in the open. 
He's not going to get the minus one for the non-assault move because, of course, the German player decided to assault move. So uh, two firepower, it's going to be doubled for point uh, blank fire. So he's going to be rolling a four and a minus one to the dice roll again. First dice is the colored dice. And let's see what he rolls here. He rolls a three, three. Um, and of course he gets a minus one to the dice roll which is going to be a total of five. But remember, uh, anytime you roll doubles, you are going to cower. When you cower, you're going to lower your column that you're resolving on by one slot. So he was uh, four firepower, so he's going to be on the two table. And a five, he's going to do a normal morale check. A normal morale check against the German unit here in K6. So he will roll to see if he gets his morale. And of course he rolls a 10. Plus uh, that is higher than his 8 because it was a normal morale check. So this unit unfortunately is also broken. And uh, since this unit has first fired, we will flip this over to first fire and place that on this unit. Um, at that point, the that unit's uh, turn will be over, and uh, this unit will then activate, and he will also, um, ace, uh, yes, he will assault move into J6. Fearing the worst, the German player again is going to take his opportunity to damage him as best he can. At this point, he can't really hold out for any better results. Um, so he's going to go ahead and do the same thing. It is a subsequent first fire, which is going to be area attack, so it's going to be half firepower. It's going to be doubled because of the point blank fire, so two half of that is one. Doubled for point blank is two. Again, he's going to get a minus one to the dice roll, and let's see what he does with this roll. He rolls a one and a one. Wow. Excellent for the Russian player. He's had some really, really good dice rolls. Uh, f fortunately or unfortunately, he did roll doubles, so he is going to cower once again. And at this case, he was going to go from the two column to the one column, but he is going to roll a total of one, two, minus one because of the uh, move in the open, which is going to kill that unit in the hex. So this unit is deleted. Again, he won't leave any residual because he cowered. Uh, and he will be flipped over to final fire. So that unit is spent except for, if you remember from our previous episodes, there is one last thing and that's kind of the last rule I want to kind of bring into play here. At this point the German player is feeling a little bit better and uh, he is going to go ahead and activate this unit right here in G6. He moves it into H6 for one movement factor. At this point, um, the German player passes. He doesn't have anybody to activate, to shoot. He moves it in, into this hex for one movement factor. Again, the uh, Russian player passes. And into this hex for three. At that point, even though this counter is final fired, he can activate and do the... <coughs> Um, final defensive fire uh, if he wishes to do that. Now the question is, is he do it? If he does it, remember, it is an attack against himself uh, 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 with the morale check. So if he rolls really high, he's going to end up breaking himself. If he rolls really low, he can do some damage. Um, again, it is adjacent but it is also half firepower so it'd be another basically on the two column so you have to think if you're the Russian player at this point um, you are going to get a minus one to your dice roll so if you're no roll normal which would be a seven you do get a minus one you could actually end up uh, rolling a pin task check or if you roll better you would get some kind of result and obviously if you roll higher it was not going to be advantageous for you and in fact you would end up uh, breaking yourself but uh, the Russian player knows that his units already in trouble anyway so he's gonna go ahead and declare um, 
his final protective fire and again he might not choose to do this but because of the example we're trying to show the rules how the rules play it he decides to go ahead and risk everything and let her rip he's been on a roll so here's his dice roll he has rolled a seven all right on a seven on the two column minus one because again he I'm sorry it's an actual it's an actual minus two he is in the open and he is also not assault moving so he is actually a minus two apologize for that if there's any confusion there again you get a minus one for moving in the open and a minus one for any unit that is not assault moving in this case unlike the half squads that uh, we were just doing he is uh, going to get a minus two to his attack so with the minus two to his attack, seven minus two is five. He rolls a five on the two column, and that's going to be a normal morale check. So the Russians are feeling pretty good. They're not going to break or run. They're actually forcing the German player to do a normal morale check against himself. And at that point, the Russian, uh, German player rolls a nine. And unfortunately for the German player, this unit also breaks. All right. Well, I was feeling good for the uh, German player, but unfortunately, um, <laughs> it has not gone exactly as planned, obviously. Um, these really nice dice rolls by the uh, Russian player is really helping, and then the German player has not had the best the best luck uh, resi uh, resisting these attacks. All right, at this point, the German player, one, two, three. Okay, uh, he's going to activate this unit in uh, G9. Um, he's going to move one movement factor to go into this space, a second movement factor to go into this space, and a third movement factor to move into this space. Now remember, the first thing that happens before the Russian player has to decide if he's going to do any defensive attack or any defensive uh, um, firing at all, uh, since we're moving into a hex with residual firepower, that's the first thing that's going to activate. So we're going to get a one attack on this unit. Let's see what happens. He rolls a seven. Let's look at our little chart here. Uh, seven. He is going to get a seven result. Uh, minus one for the non-assault move. Minus one for moving in the open. So it is a pin task check. So uh, we are going to maybe pin this unit in this hex. So we have to roll to see if we have a pin task check. We rolled a 12 to resist that, and unfortunately, once again, for the German player, his unit has moved up there and has become pinned because of the residual firepower. Now, again, the units here in K8 can choose whether or not they will also do final protective fire. Again, it's an attack. If they do really well, they can end up causing some damage to their enemy unit but if they roll higher than their morale they will uh, actually end up breaking themselves at this point he knows that this uh, unit can't actually move into the hex because he's pinned the other unit in there is broken so he doesn't really risk want to risk uh, using those attacks against that unit there at all and finally once more um. <laughs> All right. I'm just trying to figure out uh, for routing purposes where this leader might want to end up going. He probably wants to go over here to J5 because this unit can route here because it's not any closer to an unknown enemy unit, and this unit will also could go here because this is one two three this is still one two three okay so uh this unit will activate the leader he's just going to move it one two 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 over there and his activation which leaves last but not least this unit right here 
Who's going to spend, uh, yeah, two movement points to move into that hex. And uh, we will assume one more movement f factor to move into that hex. And again, puts the pressure on the German unit whether or not he wants to do his final protective fire. Remember, you can do a final protective fire as many times as enemy units walk up and to you and adjacent to you. Um, when you're marked with a final fire or counter. So if 10 other units end up moving adjacent to you, you can just keep shooting them and keep shooting them and keep shooting them um, with your final protective fire. But of course, every time you do that, you have to risk an attack on yourself. Um, and the Russian player is actually feeling pretty lucky. Um, I'm trying to hopefully have him fail once so we can see what happens. Uh, but he's going to take an attack and we'll see what happens. He rolls a 6, 7, 8, minus 2 is going to be a, a 6 on the 2 column. Again, 6 on the 2 column is a pin task check. So the uh, German player is now not feeling very good because he hasn't made one check this whole game. And fortunately, for this time, he rolls a 6, so he passes his pin task check. So when the time comes, he will be able to advance into that hex and uh, start some melee and start causing some damage to that unit. Plus, he will also be able to uh, attack in the uh, advance fire phase, which is coming up after the defensive fire phase. Uh, so I believe uh, that is all of the units for the German player for his movement turn. Um, yes, I believe that is everything. His unit is already prep fired, so remember, prep fired units can't move or shoot in the movement phase or the advanced fire phase. Uh, prep fire units will um, be done until the, uh, the end of the advanced fire phase. Remember how they're color coded? Remember, everything's color coded. <coughs> so at the end of the advanced fire phase, this counter will come off. Uh, he's moved all of his other units, and I think he is done with the movement phase. So next episode, we're going to quickly cover, because there's not a lot really left to talk about, but we're going to talk about the defensive fire phase, um, and that's another reason why I didn't use this unit, uh, just so we can talk about all the different um, aspects of who can fire and based on what their counters are. And well, like I said, we're going to look at that next episode. We'll cover the defensive fire phase and maybe talk a little bit about uh, why you might want to save some of your units uh, for the defensive fire phase as opposed to using them all in, the, in your opponent's movement phase. Also, uh, talk some strategy about uh, how, uh, how to best use your units in the defensive fire phase. And that'll be coming up next time. So appreciate uh, a lot of people have been posting some uh, comments and thoughts. I do appreciate them, and I do read them all, and I do uh, enjoy reading them and seeing uh, what you guys are thinking. And uh, if there's uh, any questions or uh, you know, just everything that comes along with uh, meeting people and, and talking with you as we progress through this. So. Uh, keep up the good work there, and I enjoy uh, watching and listening to you guys. And hopefully you're enjoying watching and listening to me as well. And we will see you next time where we're going to cover probably one more episode of the defensive fire phase for the Russian player. And then we'll be done with this little part of the scenario, and we're going to move on to some more rules. So we'll see you next time, folks. Uh, as usual, this episode went long, but as I mentioned in the beginning, we're feeling good because now our 15-minute rules actually have a 15-minute rule. We'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for watching.